Hi guys, welcome to another Face Hammer Old World show. It's quite an exciting day for me today. It is actually the preview of the Arcane Journal Warriors of Chaos. Um, so Games Workshop have sent me a sample, so thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be talking about what's in here and talking about Chaos. And I've been playing pretty much only Chaos since Old World has been back. Um, done a few events, won a couple, doing quite well with them. Um, so I'm quite excited about this this journal. I've got to say, um, before we get into the video, so I'm going to talk about everything in this journal, covering more the rules and the options rather than the law, although there is some really cool stuff in here, um, and just give you some thoughts about what I think might be C competitive play. Um, obviously, depends on your environment. You might just want to do theme lists, and there's some cool lists in here to um, to work on. Now, if you don't know what Arcane Journals are, they're basically like a expansion to the army. So you'll get a couple of army lists, a scenario, some more magic items, some special units, normally with alternative assembly. Um, and the, the journals kind of herald the pre-order of the models that people have been waiting for to come back. Now, Chaos has been a bit of an unusual one because of um, AOS Chaos. You've been able to kind of um, buy Chaos models and use those if you wanted to play Old World and wanted to play Chaos. And Chaos are particularly good in some elements and bad in others. Um, I'm not going to be doing a full Chaos review, um, but I think some of the stuff in the list is very strong. Some of it's not so good, um, much of most armies. But this is going to be about the journal. So first and foremost, um, thank you for tuning in. So it's been a while. So um, I hope you're excited as I am to get stuck into this. So we can see from the cover, um, there's a dragon on there, pretty apt. Um, this horned... Um, special character lady, I guess that's her, uh, and some cool Chaos, Chaos Warriors. Um, quite like the cover, it's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about what's in here. So I've, I just, I had to show a picture of this. I just love these, these like shield designs, and I think this one is particularly epic. Um, I really, really like this. Um, and this Fridal the Chainmaker, that's this new special character we've got. Um, and I really like I really like these these sort of like crests that are in the in the book. So that's really awesome. So there's some nice color sections about Chaos Knights and you know the models and paint schemes and things. Um, there's two lists in here. So the first one is the Wolves of the Sea. So Wolves of the Sea are basically a Marauder army, which give you access to some new Marauder units, Skin Wolves. Um, some, you know, you could take some beastmen mercenaries. Um, they're just, it's a pretty cool list. Um, so you can see from here, you know, if you can have a chaos Lord, demon prince or sorcerer Lord, so you can still take a Lord. You can have up to one exalted champion or exalted sorcerer. Um, and you can have aspiring champions and marauder tribe chieftains, which is a new hero. You've got to spend at least 25% of your army on Chaos Marauders, Marauder Horsemen, Marauder Tribe Berserkers and Warhounds, so no Chaos Warriors or Chaos Knights in your core there. 50% of your special may be spent on Chaos Warriors, Chaos Chariots, Skin Wolves, Marauder Tribe Huskers and Chaos Spawn, so no, no uh, Dragon Ogres there. But rare, up to 33%, can be Chaos Ogres, Chaos Trolls, Dragon Ogres, a gigantic Chaos Spawn, um, a Dragon Ogre Shagoth, or a Chaos Giant. Um, so, you know, up to one per thousand points. So some beasties you can take, and it says 25% of your army will be spent on mercenaries, gores and ungores. You can have a BSB, um, and they got some options of magic items. So kind of... They kind of move some of the stuff out from special to rare, you know, some of the stuff from core to special. Um, you can still take a Chaos Lord, though, so, you know, um, which is pretty cool. So what do you get, special rules-wise, for playing Wolves of the Sea? So you get the following. So you get Favour of the Gods. So if a character kills an opponent in a challenge, you get to immediately roll on the Eye of the Gods table. It's not optional. If a unit in the walls of the sea, I mean, claim a standard, they can also roll on it. 
which means your unit can get things like plus one strength or plus one attack. So that's pretty cool. Um, I like the idea of that, especially if you're, you know, you get your marauders getting their blessings. That's pretty cool. Seaborn Raiders, so units of Chaos Marauders, Marauder Horsemen, and wall in Walls of the Sea Army can have Ambush for plus one. Aspiring Champions, who are Infantry or Cavalry, can have it for plus ten points. So you can have some Ambushes. So that's pretty cool. I mean, the only problem with Ambushes is you have to roll, see if they turn up, and it's, you know, it's not guaranteed, so... They're not quite as powerful as they are in AOS, where you could just like drop nine away, guaranteed, whatever you want, you know. So it, it's a little bit less predictable, but it's just quite a good option, especially if you're, um, you know, you wanted to get into areas of the board or behind people's lines, stop people running away from you, or you know, do do some sneaky things. So I do like ambushes, especially if you can buy it on cheap units. Um, you got the warriors dual rule. So it says, instead of rolling off to determine which player takes the first turn, you may challenge your opponent to a warrior's duel. If your opponent accepts, both players choose a unit champion with a wounds characteristic of one whose troop type is infantry or cavalry, and they fight a duel. They fight as if engaged in a challenge, fight as many as necessary until someone wins. Once a victor has been determined, that model's controlling player takes the first turn. If both champions are slain, you roll off as normal. If the challenge is declined, the walls of the sea army counts as having won the roll off. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, there is a little note here: it says Bretonian army accepts the challenge. It counts as having prayed uh, for the blessing of the lady. Should a Bretonian army decline, it cannot pray, and any units that would usually begin the game of it um, automatically lose it. So. Looks like you're fighting that duel. So I assume that when you die, that you, you actually the model actually dies as well. So you lose the model out of your army. It's kind of quite thematic, the guy's sort of riding off to the middle to have a duel, you know, if you're very, very Troy. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I like that. It's a really, really interesting concept. Um, so definitely, definitely good. And obviously you can build your list around having someone that's really good. Uh, doing that i'm not gonna go through the units yet i'm gonna talk about the heralds of darkness list um and then we'll go through the all the units and the extra war scrolls special characters and war scrolls unit entries and so we've got the army of infamy heralds of darkness now heralds of darkness is basically a mounted army um it's naught to one lord demon prince sorcerer so it's very similar to what you normally get at least 33 percent so it's a much higher core tax than normal um, you must have a unit of Chaos Knights, and you have Marauder Horsemen, Chaos Warhounds, and up to one Chariot maybe is a core choice. So that maybe makes that very doable um, because you can have a Chariot in there. I, I've i just started writing a lot of lists with Knights, Marauder Horsemen, and Hounds as my core anyway. I was taking a block of Warriors, but I think they're going to they're gonna lose their spot. I think I've been a bit fortunate to get away with using them. Um, and I don't really use the knights other than as like little chaff units. So, yeah, I mean, maybe you could fit, but 33% is a bit annoying because it's, it's actually quite a, a chunk of your army. Up to 50 can be on up 0 to 1 chosen Chaos Knights, a chosen Chaos Chariot, which is pretty cool. Um, a Chaos Spawn, Chaos Chariots, Chimeras, Dragon Ogres. So you've still got the Dragon Ogres in there. I mean, to be honest, that's all I take anyway, Dragon Ogres and Chariots. Um, then you've got Rare, Gorby's Chariots, 0-1 Dragon Ogre Shagoth per unit of Dragon Ogres, a 0-1 Gigantic Spawn of Chaos, a Chaos Giant, a Warp Fire Dragon, which is my new favourite thing and will be in most of my Chaos lists going forward. Um, mercenaries, um, you've got Centacore Chieftains, Centacore Herds, sure. I'm not really, I can't really see the point of taking those. Um, it, and you might not do it for a theme, but in pure like power, they're not really adding much. I don't like the fact you can't take um, infantry, but then they're not brilliant anyway, so it's fine. Um, then you obviously got the magic items and such, so and so forth. Now, what rules do they get now? Um, all characters must have the fly X or be mounted. So you can't have foot heroes. Everything's got to be on our steed or flying. 
You've got the Steeds rule. So when an army stripped up his cavalry or chariot makes a charge, fleet, or pursuit, it may re-roll the dice of an actual one before discarding any dice that required to be discarded. So you re-roll ones on the charge, which is actually okay. Um, my only issue with it is it there's a lot of restrictions and not a lot of benefit. That's the only benefit you get. And maybe some magic item choices, but actually really you're you have to have a higher core tax you have to have it mounted and then you've got this the shadow grows but each character you include that has a mark other than undivided you must have a non-character unit with the same mark and vice versa so this is a old rule that's been in chaos armies before but this forces you to basically um have extra restrictions on your army which don't really benefit you in any way generally if you've got characters with marks you want units with marks because you want to be able to go in and out the units um but yeah that that's kind of annoying um i'm not i do fail to see why you would take a heralds of darkness list and uh, maybe it's to do with the magic items i'll have a look a bit later um but that's just my own two cents um, you've got some special characters. So we've got this Fridal, the Chainmaker. So she's an exalted champion on foot. She's weapon skill six. Um, she's a strength five. She's tough four, three wounds, four attacks. So it's just sort of standard exalted champion profile. I think she might have an extra pip of leadership. I'm not 100% sure. I've not been running exalted um, in this edition. So I might be thinking of eighth edition. Um, so she's got the ambushers rule. She's got chaos armor five at ward, which is good. She's a chain maker, which has got a special rule down here. Commander and captain, which is down here. And source of weapons, gaze of the gods, impact hits, undivided, peerless raider, and that's all down here. So chain maker, any enemy standard captured by her unit, she's joined is worth a hundred points as a trophy. So it could be pretty good, but she is infantry, so difficult to get into combat and get those things. Commander and captain, um, unless she's fleeing. For any units of Marauders, Marauder Horsemen, Marauder Tribe Huskars, Marauder Tribe Berserkers, get a plus one leadership whilst they're in her command range to maximum of 10. <coughs> so that's just a bubble leadership bonus. I mean, if she's general anyway, she's leadership nine, you raise the god, gaze of the gods, you might get plus one leadership anyway. So it's like, yeah, fine. Uh, also, they, a lot of these are war banned, so maybe. Um, Peerless Raider. So naught to one units of Cast Marauders, Marauder Horsemen, um, in the same muster list as Fridel, may have the ambush special rule for free. Now, this doesn't mean you can do this outside of the um uh the walls of the sea list, because you can take her anywhere you could take an exalted champion. So you could take her in a normal chaos list, then you have this peerless raider rule, so you could then get a free unit of ambushes. Um, in addition, if she's your general. You can get a plus one or minus one to the result when determining whether they turn up, basically. Um, and that, but that is for every of those units that's in reserve. So if you're playing a Wolves of the Sea list and you've got multiple ambushes, she gives you a little bit of manipulation about whether they turn up or not, whether you don't want them to or whether you do want them to. She's got a weapon called Storm's Wrath. So, um, she has got a shield, but this is a two handed weapon. So it's strength plus two. Minus one AP gives a D3 extra attack, such as magical. Um, and it only applies in the first round. So I think this is a flail because on the cover, she's holding a flail. This is a flail. It's very difficult to see, but yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's her. I don't, I don't know what the model looks like. We haven't seen that. There's been a bit weird. Some of the journals, like, you know, we've seen special characters and they haven't had models. Other great armies, like, you know, like Nakaf and things like that for the Tomb Kings, we have got models for, but we haven't seen, like, the Bretonian Duke guy or on foot, the, the Worm Slayer guy. We haven't seen Burlock Damason, although you could get the very, very old one. Um, you know, so maybe they'll be releasing these models um, later. Hope so. We'd like to see some new sculpts for these heroes. But she has a very similar theme to Wolfric the Wanderer. So I quite like the fact that you give that ambush capability. Um, and the Wolves of the Sea Army is very interesting. I think especially with all the Dark Oath models that have come out, you can really use those, leverage that collection of models to create your kind of cool um, Marauder Army. And it's something that I I would be very tempted to do if I was getting on to do it 
add to my chaos, but uh, my chaos army is a bit of a labour of love, so I, I hate to think how long that would actually take me in, in years to get it all painted. Um, I've actually been building a dwarf army using old school models that I had when I was a kid, but that's a different story. I'll probably do a different video on that because I'll, I'll start talking about about that in too much depth. So, and you're not here for that. You're here for this. Now, Galrock, the great Drake, he's back. I use Galrock models, my Chaos Dragon. Uh, I've got an Archeon conversion that rides him. So Galrock is, um, is a dragon, so he's awesome. So, you know, movement six, weapon skill six, strength six, toughness six, six wounds, six attacks, leadership nine. He's a named character. He's got um, a few special rules. So he is a level four wizard. He knows spells from dark magic. Can't have it all. I don't really rate dark magic. He's got armored hide, breath of change. Uh, so the breath of change, he's got some breath weapons. He's at fly, close order, large target. Mark of Zinch, he's got a regen of five up just naturally. Um, and he's got D6 Stomp Attack, Swift Stride Terror, he's two-headed. Um, so Breath of Change is once per game, instead of using the Dark Fire or Flames of Contagion, you may use the Breath of Change. So you place the Flamer template, all that kind of stuff. Any model who's underneath must uh, make a toughness test. If they fail, uh, they're immediately dead. If they pass, um, then it doesn't do anything. So it's a... Take a toughness test if you fail it, you're dead. So it's a one shot, turn you into something nasty, which is pretty cool. Um, because you don't know a toughness test, you've got a roll equal to under your toughness, but I'm pretty sure a six is always a fail. So, um, if you've got any way to manipulate toughness through magic as well, there, there might be a combo there, but pretty good. Um, as it bypasses everything. Um, so this spirit of Garak rule basically is, um, it's that old rule where you've got to take a leash test. If you fail it, then you become a level one. You get random 2d6 move, and then you have to hit yourself. Um, so it's like a negative rule. Um, he's got the two-headed dragon rule, so he gets two, basically, breath weapons. So um, obviously his wicked claws are minus two, but it's, it's dark fire, strength four, minus one. And then the flames of, of fumes of contagion, strength two, no AP but no armor saves. So, you know, these are the two direct Chaos Dragon breath weapons. This is basically the, two, the Chaos Dragon special rule. Um, so he's pretty cool. I mean, he's 465 points for a level four wizard that is a dragon. So he's kind of like a cheap Chaos Lord slash level four in one. So if you wanted to take a BSB exalted hero, you can suddenly fit them in because normally if you run a dragon lord, you're looking at 560 points plus, and then you go, I want a level four, that's all your heroes. You're not getting anything else, uh, especially if you put equipment on them and, and demonic gifts. He's nowhere near as good as a chaos lord on dragon because you don't have the ward save from chaos armor. You know, he's got that, negative of you having to roll to see whether he behaves um he's not strength seven he doesn't have the gun on top wailing with his flail or whatever you've armed him with um but he's okay he's a cool themed option whether or not you'll take him i don't know um you might see him in play you're not going to put him with a chaos dragon i think you're probably always going to just hit the points out for a normal chaos dragon but there's an option um obviously it means they're probably re-releasing the model which is good news for people who want to uh who get hold of him mine's made of metal and weighs a ton um so we've got a uh, maraud tribe chieftains so this is basically just a hero which can they can have marks you can be on a horse they're just like a a little cheap hero they do have chaos armor six up which is quite cool um but yeah, he's just weapons give five strength, four, three attacks. There's nothing to shout home about. He's just like a human noble, basically. Um, but it's pretty cool that you can have a Marauder hero. So if you don't want any like proper Chaos Warriors, you can do a whole Marauder force. Um, it's quite a cheap option for a hero as well. Um, I don't think he can be the BSB unless you're in that. That I think you might have to be in that army. Um could they be a BSB? No, has to be Exalted or Aspiring. Okay. Oh, that's Heralds of Darkness. Wolves of Sea. Oh, yeah, Marauder Chieftain. There you go. So, can be. Um, yeah, so you can make a cheap BSB guy. Um, 
You got Marauder the Berserkers. Now they are coming in five or more. Regular infantry. Not ham weapon light armor. Weapons good for straight free. So this is just a Marauder profile, but they are tough for a little bit tougher. Um you can give them additional hand weapons, you can give them flails, they can have thrown axes, you can have obviously a champion style and musician, it can be ambushing. They have frenzy, uh, mark of undivided, move through cover, open order, relentless skirmishes, war band. So um it says it has a six up ward against any wounds caused by non-magical enemy attack. Um so it just says like you can use marauders and use other components. I mean you could get the Dark Oath models, so you know, for me. These are like a skirmishy, slightly tougher, frenzied unit. So they they're quite cool. I mean, I could definitely see them in in that walls of the sea list. Um so then we've got um skin wolves. Now skin wolves I think are really good. So they're movement seven, weapons of five, which is quite big. Um, strength four, toughness four, three wounds, initiative four, which is good, three attacks, low leadership. Um you can have to have two of them. They're 40 by 40 mil. Uh, you can have a Yarl for seven points. They've got this Blood Rage rule, which is, I think, is the rule that the um, Minotaurs have. Undivided, open order. They've got Primal Fury. Again, that's on Revenue Hordes. Regen. Skirmish of Swift Giant Warped Form. So it says here, when the unit's combat's chosen, um, choose one of the following transfigurations, and it lasts until the start of turn subphase. So you can have enlarged claws. So the armor piercing is improved by one and they gain armor bane two. Uh, they can have extra attacks plus one or they can have their toughness by one and it's armor value by two. So, I mean, you've got a defensive one, extra attacks, but or what if, you, if you're fighting like chaffy units or you can go for the, you know, the actual um, AP version. Um, quite like... Those options. I mean, they got a five at regen, but being able to get extra tough, being tough as five, and having plus two armor, that's pretty decent. Um, so I like those. I like skin wolves. I think they're really cool. Forty-five points, not too bad. Um, you got Marauder Tribe Huskars, which are light cavalry. So these are basically um slightly more elite Marauder Cav. They're basically extra toughness. Um, other than maybe Pippa leadership, I think. Um. And they can have cavalry spears, flails, thrown axe javelins, light armor, heavy armor. So you can actually have heavy armor, marauder cavalry. Um, so there's all of in between chaos knights and marauder cavalry, basically. Shields. You can have a mark. Um, naught to one per thousand may have the drilled special rule. That's really good. Uh, drilled is amazing. They and the thing is that well, this this really winds me up, and maybe I'm out of place, but. They've got counter charge, furious charge, swift stride and warband, but chaos knights do not have counter charge. But a chaos steed does have it. Chosen have got it. So these are really good. I mean, eighteen points each is pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean they're not gonna have a massively good armor save. Maybe four up is your best you're gonna get. But the fact is, and they don't have chaos armor, sure, but. The fact they can be drilled and, you know, they've got furious charge and counter charge and you can give them flails, which I would probably do every time. They're actually quite a nasty unit, especially if you make them, you know, corn, give them extra attack. You can give them a magic banner up to 50 points. So, you know, there's just some good options in there. You can give the first sword, you know, your brazen collar for magic resistance too, which is just sort of staple in a chaos army. I really like this unit. I think it's cool. It gives some really nice modeling opportunities. Um, yeah, I, I think they're awesome. Um, Chosen Chaos Chariots, 140 points. So they're 30 points more than a normal chariot. You are basically getting one extra attack um, on the charioteers. And I think that's about it can't see any other difference um so there's still weapon skill five there's still strength four um they've got halberds yeah two attack one attack each normally they've got two attacks now they're tough five four wounds that's exactly the same 
So you're basically paying 30 points for two extra attacks. Um, which, you know, is, is, is something they suffer with, only having one. I mean, I think Chaos Warriors should have two attacks anyway. That's just me going by old old rules, really. So um, you yeah, give them a mark. Um, they do have foot, but first charge impact hits. That's all there that the other chariot has. Um, and, yeah, you can make it a mount, but I don't really get... I mean, one extra leadership, I think, at least at nine rather than eight. I don't really get what why you would pay 30 extra points when really you're about the impact hits and board presence and it becomes a special choice. I mean, they are anyway, but, you know. I mean, okay, fine. Um, I, I just it needed a bit more for me. You know, not having an extra wound or not have just something, extra strength maybe on the chariots here, so strength six. Just it didn't feel, it doesn't feel very special that makes sense um but as just me um gigantic spawn of chaos uh it's 145 points it's strength six tough of six six wounds um it's got d6 plus one attacks 3d6 move it is a behemoth um and it's got heavy armor you can give it a mark um armor being two close order first charge immune psych large target um Timber unbreakable. Um unbreakable six wounds, tough of six. Well five ups, pretty good. Um so it says that um these marks are slightly different to your normal. That's why they've got different points. So corner of impact hits D3 and killing blow. That's really good. I like that a lot. Nurgle have poison attacks and regen. Again, that's pretty decent. Sonesh's counter charge and strikes first, so that's pretty good as well. And Zinch has flaming attacks, magical magic resistance too. Uh, depending on what you want it to do, I mean, I like the corn one, but then poison attacks and regen, pretty good. Um, it's minus one AP uh, on its talons, and it says it may choose to make one of its attacks with this weapon. For each wounded enemy unit loses as this attack, the model immediately recovers a wound. So this is a strength um, minus two strikes last, but it, it heals itself. It says any army using warriors of chaos or beastmen um, may include naught to one gigantic spawn of chaos per thousand points as a rare choice. So I think it's pretty good. Um, it's quite cheap for what it is. I, I do like it. I mean, the random move is it can be a bit troublesome, but it's 3d6. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to cause some problems, um, you know, for the points cost. It's only weapon skill three, but it is tough than six with six wounds, um, which, you know, being unbreakable as well, it, you could just run in front of something and pin it. Some things will struggle, especially if you've gone for the regen option to, to actually kill it on the charge. Because trying to put six wounds through with a five up, five up is difficult. And not a lot of things can put that output out there. Um, and even if they can, it's like, you know, you've got a chance to just spawn your five ups. Uh, pardon the pun. Um, so I think it, it might have a place in a lot of lists. It, it seems quite interesting. It is a rare. I mean, I don't tend to touch rare uh, slots in my Warriors army. I don't write the Hell Cannon. And, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool, but that's going to change because um, this this is this is the, the the unit in the book for me, the warp fire dragon. So this is three hundred and seventy five points. It's basically movement six, weapon skill six, strength six, toughness six, six wounds with five attacks. So it's like a, it's a dragon, which is cool, um, but it also can be a wizard. Um, and it can know from demology, battle magic, and dark magic. Now, some of the spells you have access to here with like the assailment, hammer hand, and battle magic, or a five up ward, or in demology, like getting hatred, or um, you know, you could there are some really good buffs in these um, these laws. It can be a level two wizard, um, it is a 60 points extra. But being a level two wizard with access to these spells, it opens up some options for you. Um, it has an explosive demise rule, so when it loses its last wound, then each uh, 
each unit friend of foe within six inches takes d6 strength five hits um it's kind of lost off on the page there so i'm just gonna i'm gonna look up because of the glare i find it quite hard to photograph um this sort of brushed it a little bit um ap and minus two so it's quite nasty if you want to run this independently into combat and stuff and it dies it, it even in death it will kill stuff obviously you've got to be a little bit careful that you don't leave it near your own stuff because it affects you too um now it does have a five up ward against wounds um caused by attack that's either magic or flaming now this is something you're gonna have to um really ask your opponent but also know about a lot of units have the magical attacks or flaming attack rule but it doesn't really do anything in the game most of the time so people just forget about it so it's worth understanding what's magical what's flaming in their army maybe it's a conversation to have at the start of the game to ensure that you you know what you're getting your ward against um and then we've got the warp fire aura now this is really cool. Other models, both friend and foe, are not permitted a ward save whilst within three inches of this model. Now, obviously, that obviously doesn't apply to itself because otherwise you never get your fire and chaos rule. So it probably needs an FAQ, but I'm sure that'll be coming. Um, so it says Wicked Claws are minus two AP. You've got the Warp Fire Blast. Now, this is the really interesting thing. The Warp Fire Blast is fires like a stone thrower. It uses the three inch blast template um, and it's strength eight minus three AP D three plus one under the hole. Um, and that's just like, it's like a stone, it's a stone thrower. That's really cool that you've basically got this wizard dragon that's obviously got fly. Um, and you can take this as well in a normal grand army as a rare choice. Um, and, you know, it's got Fly 10, it's got Magic Resistance 2, um, it's got Magical Attacks, it's got a Regen of 5 up, it's got Swift Stride, Causes Terror, it's got the Aura, so you're getting a 5 up, it's got um, Full Plate, so it's got a 4 up, 5 up, maybe a 4 up, 5 up, 5 up. Um, you know, it's pretty decent. It die When it dies, it blows up, it's got a Stone Thrower shot on it. I really, really like this. I don't see why you would take this, you wouldn't take this over a hell cannon every day of the week. I know it's more points, but it's so much more impactful. I really like the warp fire dragon. I think if you were playing a chaos army without a chaos lord on a dragon, and hopefully we can start moving away from that, and you're using the demon prince build, this is a great option to get a dragon in your army without touching your hero points, allowing you to do stuff like your chosen star night bus with the exalted or your chaos lord in it, or have like free roaming mounted chaos lords that have got three sixty arc, you know that that can operate around your army, and this just opens that up because although it's not a chaos lord on a dragon, it's not that six hundred point monstrosity, um, it is awesome. Like in terms of it does give you most of the same things um, and it's generally pretty good. I mean, I know it's only got five attacks, but most of the damage from the dragons from the stomp. So and it does still cause terror and it is still a wizard. If you get an assailment spell on there, then that just adds more, you know, just it just adds more damage. Um, I think there's options. I mean, Dark Magic gives you a magic missile uh, as the signature. Demonology gives you a magic missile. I mean, you've got the choice, the option to roll some good buffs in there. I really like the Warp Fire Dragon. I think it's uh, it's decent. Um, I, I really, really like that for 375. Whether you make it a wizard, that's something you have to play around with. I mean, I think even a level one would be useful. Um, but obviously, um getting spells through might be tricky uh the fact it's got mr2 though is decent so you know it's um mr in a chaos army is pretty strong um if you can get a wizard with a puppet running around that that really does help new to the enemy magic as well but yeah i like it like it a lot i'm really excited to see the model back um a lot of these are the old um forge world models that went away so definitely think that opens up some lists because in the meta, I think you need 
you having a, a stone for a shot is really helpful without tying you into having a hell cannon, which I think is an awful thing um, because it's not predictable. It can go off and do its own thing. It, it is a lot of points, you know. Um, the fact is, although if you misfire, you take a wound. So it's not that bad. You know, you, oh, I take a wound. Okay, fine. You know, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, that's better than just losing the whole model from, you know, misfiring on the Hell Cannon roll on one. You're like, oh, great. So, um, yeah, I like the Warp Fire Dragon. I'm a big fan of that. You might tell me I'm mad in the comments or something, tell me that I'm wrong, it's not very good, or I, I just think it's cool. So, magic items. Now, we've got some gems in here. Now, some good ones. So, um, some of these can only be taken in Herald of Darkness Army. So the Obsidian Dreadglaive is actually pretty good. This is plus two strength, minus one. It's got Armor Bane, Kill and Blow. Takes two hands, strikes last. So it's actually a nice item. It's only 55 points. Um, it's okay. But obviously the issue you've got is that it's two-handed. So you're losing your bit of armor save. It's strike last. So there's some issues with it. You've got the Dagger of the Dark Pantheon. And that's minus two AP. And for every wound an enemy unit loses, um, you get plus one to the next cast or dispel. Sure, it's okay. 35 points is too expensive for me. I'm not taking that. Um, you've got the Chieftain's Blade. This only for the Wolves of the Sea Army. It's plus one strength, minus one AP, armor bane, one magic. Um, and it says, whilst engaged in a challenge, you have plus one to their rolls to hit. Now, obviously, that might be quite good to put on your champion that's going to go in that duel at the beginning of the game to go first. You've got the Taskmaster's Scourge, which is a uh, strength, as your normal strength, minus one AP, extra attacks, magical. It says models who shoot over infantry, infantry only. During the command subphase, the wielder can attempt to urge those around the battle. So take a leadership test if you pass it. Until the start of your next turn, this character in the unit they join can plus D3 to their movement characteristic, which doesn't sound that exciting, but then when you think about it on like a unit of of infantry getting plus d3 to your movement allows you to charge further than you can and that might mean the difference between making that charge or not if you're in, if you're a drilled unit or you're in marching column you're tripling that bonus so you know if you're drilled chosen warriors you go in a marching column their movement four or five, whatever it is, I think it's four. You roll the you roll the D3, you pop them up to seven, you're in much as 20 inches. That's suddenly like that's a significant difference. Um, particularly if you then got things like um there's a demology spell that gives you plus one move, but there's also, you know, you could do a arcane urgency to move again. Um I like that. I like having extra movement. It's 20, 25 points, it's a great champion item. Just because it gives you your, your item, the your um your unit the chance to do that. Obviously, you've got to take the leadership test on the base leadership, but pretty cool. Um, I like the imagery of it. It's good. Um, again, I'm not. I don't say it's amazing. So don't get don't don't misconstrue me saying oh yeah, definitely got to take that. I just think it's quite cool. Um, so in magic armor. Um, you got demonic plate mail. So it's infantry cavalry only. It's full plate. And you improve your toughness and initiative by one. That's pretty good. I mean, like, you know, you're getting extra toughness. That 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 helps. Um, I actually think a demonic steed should give you extra toughness anyway, but it doesn't. So, hey, what do I know? But, um, yeah, I, 50 points is a bit expensive. Um, there are lots of, there's lots of good defensive items in the chaos list. Uh, it's okay, though. Um, it's very good for... Um, a wizard because it gives you a full full plate armor rather than a light armor or heavy armor um and you know increases your toughness so it's it's pretty good for like a level four on a horse um but there are better options i think so you've got mighty serpent scale mail only take that in wolves of the sea army uh it's heavy armor and you get strike first yeah that's fine um then you've got the talisman and this one is great so Talisman of the Carrion Crow, you get regen, five up, and poison attack. So you've got the Crown Everlasting Conquest, 
You've now got another regen item, and most of your characters come baked in with a gate with a god save anyway. So if you had like a level four and a dragon lord, which is what I'm running, then my level four can now have a five up, five up, as well as my dragon having a five up, five up. I really like that poison tax me, whatever. But it's it's another regen save of a five up available to your army, so you can have two characters with five up regens. So that's great. Love that. Um, they got the Talisman of the Soaring Eagle. So you get magic resistance two and a five up ward against wounds that are caused by magical attacks. Again, pretty good. It's 35 points. Um, you've got the brazen collar for 20 for my MR2. So it's whether or not you want that ward against magical attacks. Again, it's one of those things you've got to how often is an attack magical? How many people will tell you? Because a lot of stuff have a rule that makes them magical, but people forget because it doesn't really make any difference. So having good knowledge of what weapons are magical and what attacks are magical is important if you're going to run that. Um, you've got magic banners. You've got Banner of the Dark Powers. It's MR3, 50-point banner. Not a bad option. Quite like that. Banner of the Braying Hound. Um, Braying Hound can only be taken Heralds of Darkness. Infamy list. Um, and they gain Vanguard. Now, obviously... A unit of Chaos Knights that move before the game. Quite like the idea of that. And that's one of the things that they are saying about um, what you gain out of taking, you know, the Heralds of Darkness list. That's one of the unique items that you can only take that list, which gives you a way of pre-game move your Chaos Knights seven inches forward. You could then have a turn one charge on... Um, so not a bad shout. I quite like that. Um, you've also got Sea Raiders Crest. Could only be taken by a model in the Wolves of the Sea Army of Infamy. Uh, gain the Fear. Uh, and if they've already got it, they gain Terror. Sure. Basically, it makes you immune to Terror in a way because it only causes fear in you. Will you use it? I don't know. Um, it's there. So I, I don't know. It's okay. I just think it save your points, but there you go. Um, Icon of Darkness um, is an extra minus one um, to shoot at that unit. Now, that's really good for 20 points because you've got the, diab the demonic gift, um, which allows you to make the hero and whatever unit they've joined minus one to hit. That means your shooting is going to be at minus two against that unit. That's pretty epic because you know any army that wants to pepper you with armor piercing bows or anything like that they're suddenly really going to struggle to hit you at minus two so i think for 20 points it's really cheap um and you could just stick that on a unit like a unit of knights or something that you're like well i don't i'm shooting them to bits or unit of warriors and it just it just makes a difference i think i think the 20 points is cheap enough that it's not a big points investment but it, it is impactful, particularly if you're going to, like, in a certain meta or if, if there are a lot of wood elves around. It's pretty decent. I mean, it, it, I, I like it a lot. Um, then we've got Enchanted Items of Blood Skull Pendant. Um, it's infantry only. Instead of attacking, uh, you may do a single strength eight hit on every enemy model in base conduct AP and minus one, and they've got killing blow. Um, sure. I don't see it being used. Um, it might be a funny item to put on a champion if you could take a 45 point on unit on a champion, but I'd rather just have more guys in the unit, I think. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Rod of the Damned. You may cast the summoning from Law of Demology as a bound spell with a level of two. It's a better spell than Fireball. It's got some armor pierce on it. Um, you can have this with Ruby Ring in your list. So now you've got two characters with magic bound spells and you've got two regen items. Suddenly we're looking at chariot riding wizards with um, regens and extra 360 degree magic missiles, inch goodness. Um, I, I like this one a lot. I think you'll see it played a lot. Uh, yeah, awesome. Then we've got Demon Forge Barding. Can only be taken in a Heralds of Darkness army. So this is another, if you want to go for that Night Bus with that um, Howling Banner. Um, on the turn that they charge, their mount and all mounts in the unit they have joined have plus one attack. 
Cow Steeds are strength four. Um, it's 35 points, so it's expensive, but plus one attack on all your horses. We know that horses always do better than the riders if we're to believe the hype of old world law. Um, that yes, the horses always outperform, so getting them an extra attack is probably not a bad thing. Um, it's themed, it's fun. Is it worth the points? Is it amazing? I don't know, but we'll see. I think you can probably stick that on a champion in a in a chosen chaos knight unit. Um, so it might be a good option for that. We've got the Scepter of Power. It's 55 points. They may add plus one to cast or dispel. However, should they roll any double, they take a strength 10 hit with minus three AP. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, plus one to cast or dispel. But that negative, uh, mathematically, I don't know if it's that good. But um, yeah, it's okay. It's 55 points as well. I'm not sure I'm taking that one. Um, and we've got the Grimrar of Ogvold. Um, rather than randomly selecting the spells they know, and regardless of their level, they know all seven spells from their lore, including the signature. However, they can only cast a number of spells equal to their wizardry per turn, 50 points. So it gives you some options. It means you don't have to play the game of, did I roll it or did I not roll it? Um, 50 points expensive particularly when you've got cheaper items that allow you just to pick the spells you want. And it doesn't let you cast any more than you normally can. Um, so, yeah, it's okay. Um, Tomb of the Dark Gods, 35 points. Mark of Undivided only. When generating spells, the bearer of the tome may discard any number of their randomly generated spells. For each spell, they may select any spell from the Law of Chaos as if they had the Mark of Chaos. So you can take your Blue Fire and you can take your you know fleshy abundance if you want um and what's really nice you can also take the signature of the law that you're taken so if for example you're in demology you could take the summoning and blue fire and fleshy abundance and then whatever else you've rolled so you could have those that sweet so it does open up some stuff um i do quite like that i think it's good because you're guaranteed to swap something to blue fire if you want it and you've also got you're not tied into taking the mark to get that spell as well so you can go well i'm undivided but i have the mark um so yeah i i do like that item i think it's cool um will it see a lot of play i don't know i don't think so um but there you go so um that is the Arcane Journal. I mean, obviously, there's more in there with lore. There's a scenario, um, and it's all very cool. Um, I've got to say, as a Chaos player, I'm very excited about Warp Fire Dragons. Uh, some of the magic items I'm very excited about. I think that adds a real boost. I think the Wolves the Sea Army is pretty cool. I think it can be competitive. I like the modeling opportunities you have in there with the Dark Oath collection of models and just even kit bashing between Marauders and Chaos Warriors. I think that's pretty, pretty damn good. So the Heralds of Darkness list, my army basically fits into that anyway. Would I take it? Well, I mean, I get that charge bonus. I don't really have any negatives because I've already, my army always fits in those restrictions. Um, I think... You know, it's one of those things. I'm not sure. I'd have to play around with it a little bit. Um, I really like um, some of those magic items open up some really nice combos. I really want to move away from the Dragon Lord. But I love having a dragon. So the Warp Fire Dragon, that's why I'm so excited about that model. Um, Gaurak as well is an option um, if you want to move away from such an expensive Dragon Lord. But I don't really rate the... Uh, level four lord eggs in one basket it doesn't have a ward save you know it's kind of uh, not sure um but yeah i'm really big fan of the arcane journal system okay guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed my overview of the uh, arcane journal um really excited to get my hands on some of the the new the dice and the cards hopefully i've managed to be quick enough i'm actually at a tournament as this is premiering uh, wish me luck. I'm taking a Chaos Dragon because 
why not keep using the gift that keeps on giving? Uh, and uh, yeah, doing pretty well with it. Tying up a couple armies, wherever I want to take a level four. As I'm recording this, I've got three different lists that I'm chatting with uh, my two Bretonian bros that I'm traveling up with. Uh, and just sort of saying, like, do I want to take my level four on Zinch? Do I want him running around doing magic missiles? Do I want him in a night bus? I'm probably leaning towards the MSU. I've started to look at Chaos Warhounds. Um, I think, actually, for the points, he'd be pretty good. Um, I was impressed with the fact that Weapons Go 4 kind of makes a difference. Um, I like the fact they got moved through cover as well, uh, which makes them kind of, you can run them through forests and things without having any issues um you can give them vanguard if you want to get a pre-game head start um take up position you know so i mean that they're not amazing but at least it gives me something cheap and to delay people a little bit um maybe it's just points to give away but uh yeah they, they don't rally very easily so you kind of go um we did learn a lot about fleeing in the last event um i had some really good games i had the privilege of playing both martin bunton the original master and um john dale again i managed to get my revenge from the other event though we didn't i didn't lose i didn't win so this time i decisively was able to beat john uh, he was an absolute gent about it and i managed to take the tournament out so i'm going to do a probably do a video on my experience going through my list and what I did, and then I'll probably do a follow-up after this weekend. Um, I want to do a bit more recording. It's been a bit difficult in the summer holidays with uh, Gabble being off school and um, some other bits and bobs going on in my life, So, but we'll get there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that kind of algorithm stuff. If you want to get some good discounts, uh, customer service, you go to Element Games, you click through the link in the description. Other stuff in the link in the descriptions that helps me out. You just have a look at the description and, and see ways you can do that. Again, um, let me know what you're excited about in terms of your, your Chaos Warrior list, if there's anything you're really looking forward to getting on the table. Um, I'm going to go to... War in the Heartlands, which is Liam Jordan and uh, Mark Wildman's event, which is at the end of the uh, October, I think 24th, something like that. Um, I'll put some details in the description. I'm going to, um, yeah, go to that. I'm, I am actually working on a dwarf army at the moment, um, as I think I mentioned in the show. I don't think I'll take dwarves um, because it's going to be a bit of a labour of love. and It's a bit of a sad story, but I had my army stolen or half stolen when I was in my 20s at Games Workshop, but I painted it through my childhood with my brother. And it was sort of the last time that we really spent some real quality time together when we were on holiday camping. And he would be painting his scaven, and I'd be painting my dwarfs. Um, and with the ability to get a lot of those old models back, uh, and I've been on eBay spending way too much money on, on little bits of lead, I've managed to almost recreate the full army i'm still after some bugman's rangers and the old uh flame cannon with the barrel i don't want to pay too much for it um not that i'd probably ever run it in a list but um i love the model so i kind of want to paint it uh anyway that's a bit of a sidetrack but thank you very much for watching catch you in the next one and i wish you all a good day and uh, wish me luck because i'm currently rolling dice and uh uh, trying to appease the dark gods and hopefully this show will help you plan your domination of the old world with the ruinous powers so thank you very much catch you at the next one mm -hmm.